What's up everyone? So this is going to be an overview of Notability in 2020. So grab your new iPod, iPad Pro from 2020, download Notability, and let's go through it together. So I have basically a master document between all these note-taking apps that I'm going to compare them to, but I'm just going to give you a brief rundown of how to use Notability in 2020, what features it offers, and maybe a quick look at things I hope they'll add in the future. So to begin with, you can see that this is the interface. On your left, you have all your dividers and your subjects. So you can break, put different subjects into different dividers. As you see that I usually just make different dividers based on the semester I'm in in college. And then within that semester, I have different subjects based on whatever courses I was taking that semester but you can go ahead and do this any, any way you want. This is not a proper file management system by any means. You can't create dividers within dividers or subjects within subjects or anything like that. And it's one thing that I wish Notability would add in one of their later updates. But for now, this is what they've done and this is how you do it. So if you wanna add a divider or subject, you just click on the plus here and you can decide if you wanna add a divider or a subject and you can move subjects between dividers pretty easily by just jet dragging and dropping them like so. So let's go ahead and start with this subject. Go ahead and create a new note in this subject and see how that works. So what you wanna to do to create a new note is click on this top right button here. And you can see that you're brought in to this blank page. You can choose whether you want this page to be blank, lined, grid, circle paper, whatever you want. When you first create a new note, you can, you can do that in the settings. Uh, but I usually prefer writing on this type of lined paper. But if I really wanted to change the paper template, I can go ahead here, click on paper, and then choose between all these paper templates that you see here. And I can even change the color based on these preset templates that they've given us. So there's a little bit of flexibility here in terms of changing your paper template, but it's not something as extensive that you might see in GoodNotes 5 or even NoteShelf 2 for that matter. Now, if you want to start writing, so you can go ahead and just start writing, but you'll probably want to change your pen or your colors a little bit. So to do that, you click on this button here and you have a whole bunch of preset colors that you can change and add, but you can also add your own custom colors in these spots here. I haven't added any custom colors because I find the presets to be sufficient and perfectly usable. In fact, I really like these pastel colors that they've preset and added for you already. You can also change your tip of your pen so you can draw very thick or you can draw something very fine. I usually prefer writing at the second option here. So this is very close to being the finest point you can get. I think it helps my writing and improves it a little bit. And up here, you can notice that there's these two squiggles. So this one is if you want pre pressure sensitivity on, this one is if you want pressure sensitivity off. I actually prefer writing without pressure sensitivity because it looks more even that way. And if I can make my notes look more even, which is something you can't necessarily control in the real world, then I will definitely take that advantage with digital note taking. You can even use a highlighter, which they show here. Very similarly, you can turn on pressure sensitivity for that or not. You can change the size of your highlighter and you can change the colors based on the presets they've given you or any other colors you've added. So that's really nice. Now Notability has improved the highlighter. So it looks a lot better now when you highlight the text. Usually the highlighter was a little faint when you would start highlighting text because they were trying to make it look more realistic, but this is digital note taking. We want it to look better than realistic. So they went ahead and fixed that. Now on this option here, you can see there's an eraser. So you can have the option of doing a whole erase or a partial erase. With the whole erase, you will erase the entire stroke. So I drew this highlighter in one stroke. So if I just erase that one part of the highlighter, the whole highlighter stroke goes away. Similarly, if I just erase a part of this O, the whole O goes away. And the same is for all the other letters that I have shown here. But if you don't wanna do a whole erase, you can now do a partial erase if you wanna create a disconnection between two lines. So you can change your partial erase and you can even change the shape of the eraser the whole eraser or the partial eraser to get it as precise as you want. So you can go ahead and just do a partial erase between there, partial erase there, partial erase there. And now if you switch back to the whole erase, you can whole erase these separate strokes. So what I usually use the partial eraser for is for making arrows. So if I go ahead and draw an arrow, but I want it to be a dashed arrow, the partial eraser is really useful for that because you can just go ahead and then just erase in between like that. And now it looks like you made a pretty decent dashed arrow. 
Now you may have noticed that when I drew a line, a straight line, Notability actually corrected it to make it exactly straight. So if you're drawing a straight line has a load of curves in it and you keep your pencil held down, Notability corrects it into a straight line and then you can even change the angle of the line if you keep your pencil down. What's something neat is finally Notability has added the feature of text to shape or ink to shape. So if you draw a triangle and hold it down, it'll correct it into a nicer looking triangle and you can even adjust the dimensions to whatever you see fit. Um, the same is true for a circle, oval, square, or rectangle. So you can go ahead and change all those dimensions if you want. And all you have to do is draw the shape you want and just keep your pencil down and it'll go ahead and correct the shape for you. So a pretty nice, easy to use for ink to shape, which is a feature that they were lacking on for a while. They also have a lasso tool, which is pretty standard to across many note-taking apps. You can have a square lasso or a draw your lasso to whatever you want. So if you have a very complex drawing that's going all over the place and you just wanna highlight specific parts of it, you can go ahead and trace around it with the lasso tool and then go ahead and copy it or delete it or do whatever you want with it. So it's a very nice tool to have. And if you don't wanna keep drawing, you can just have the square lasso tool. So you just click on the square and you can draw a square around whatever you wanna select and go ahead and move that around. So really, really good all the, all the way around. Really, really good features. Now there's also this pointer tool that you see here. This just means you will only be in touch mode so you can't accidentally make any marks if you use the pencil. So it's just pretending that everything you're using is a finger and it's not actually going to edit anything you're in. If you're in a very detailed note that you have a lot going on and you don't want to accidentally erase anything or draw something, just put it in this mode as you're looking at your note and it'll feel just like a regular document, like a PDF, and it won't be like you can actually edit anything on there. So that's really nice. Now I'm recording this video and I've plugged it in and you can see that I have a laser pointer available and this is only available in presentation mode. So if, you're, if your iPad is being mirrored or connected to a different display, you can have this option of presentation mode where this laser pointer is available. So this is a very new feature that they've added and it's really useful when you're giving presentations, especially during this time, if you're teaching online, virtually via Zoom or anything like that, you can have a virtual laser pointer to point out specific facts. And this is something I actually do almost every day with my class that I have to teach. So that's really effective to use and this is, makes it a very useful teaching tool as well. Finally, up here, you can see that there is this microphone button and basically it's going to record any audio that's happening. So as you take notes when you're writing, you can go back and track what notes you took based on what the professor was saying. So as I'm writing here, you can see that I've written my notes, I've taken a recording, and when I go back to play this recording, you can see that my notes appear based on whatever time I wrote them down. And so when you're listening to your lectures, you can see when your notes appeared. So when you wrote something down, or if you're just looking at your notes, you can click on the notes like that, and it'll take you to the exact time that you wrote it down. So if I wanna click on the time, I wanna hear what the professor was saying when I wrote the word notes down, I click on the word notes and it takes me to that location. So that's extremely useful and something I wish all note-taking apps had but it's definitely one of the greatest features that Notability has for sure. So it's really easy to import different things into Notability as well. You can import images, you can document scan, you can add GIFs, web clip, stickies. You can do all sorts of things to add some spice to your notes. Honestly, I don't use any of these features usually when I'm taking notes. I'm usually just creating my own figures or I'm copying and pasting images from the web, which is also very easy to do. But if you do want to do anything like that, that is here. But I won't go into too much detail into any of that because most of this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, even the web clip, it'll just give you a clip of whatever part of a web article that you're looking at and you can insert it into your note itself and it can even create a hyperlink if you want to do that. Now in these options, I already showed you, you can change your paper template and the color of your paper. Usually what I do is I draw with these lines or with these circles and then when I'm done with my notes, I switch it to the blank paper so it looks a little bit cleaner. So I'll give you an example. So these are some notes that I took. Now I didn't just freehand this on a blank piece of paper. I actually had this grid sort of template in the background with the circle dots and I made it like this. And then when I was done writing the notes, I switched it to blank to make it look really clean. And it really just improves, I think, the overall look of your notes and the aesthetic of your notes. And if you go along here, they introduce this new 
view option. So usually Notability has been a vertical scrolling type of note taking app. So as you scroll vertically, you get to your new pages, just like you would in like Microsoft Word or something like that, which is what I prefer. But I guess some people do prefer to have their option to view it like other note taking apps where you swipe left and right to get to your new pages. Now, I think this is very difficult to do because I like to see all my notes um, at once. I don't want to keep swiping between these two pages because then you can't see what you wrote just above this area here. You have to actually swipe back. So I like to keep it in the seamless view as I call it or otherwise known as vertical, sc or vertical scrolling instead of horizontal scrolling. Apps like GoodNotes 5 can also do this, but it's nice that Notability has added this option too. Now, if you go to the info, you can see that you can check your word count if you add text, which I'll go over in a second. And then on this thumbnail view, you can actually bookmark certain pages so that if you click on your bookmarks tab, you can see important slides or important pages that you wanna refer back to later. And you can search your text, so handwritten notes and PDFs that you've imported. You can search all that text, which is a really powerful tool. So if I type the word notes, you can see that what I wrote when I wrote notes, that is now highlighted. If I were to import a PDF and search here, you could search those words as well. So really, very powerful tools that Notability is offering here. Now, if you don't wanna do any writing, you can add text. So you can either add a text box or start typing like a Word document. So if I just start typing here, you can see that it's just adding a line. It's already indenting it to the left and I can start typing like this. But you might want to be more have more flexibility with your text. So you can actually create a text box instead by holding your finger down and clicking add text box. And let's see, I can say, hello. And then I can go ahead and drag this text box around. I can rotate this text box anywhere I want and put it wherever I want in my notes. And what's really cool is if you do that, you can also change the style of the text box. So that means that you can increase the font, change the color, change the font, um, bold, underline, italicize, do all these sorts of things. So one issue I do have with Notability is that there's no alignment options in your text. So I can't center this and I can't left in, indent or right indent or justify my text. It is only left indented always, which is really a bummer and a really easy fix, I think. But you can add bullet points if you want. So now I've added a bullet point to my text box. And let's go ahead and move this around here. Let's rotate this so it's easy to use and let's style it and you can change it to numbered lists so you do have those sorts of options as well and then you can also change it into a checklist so you can actually check off things that you've done like that now you can even change the paper of this text box so if you want it to be a different color than the rest of your document you can go ahead and change that and change its template but that's as far as you can go by adding different paper templates within the same document. So you, I can't make my second page of my document a different paper template. It has to be the same paper template regardless, unless you add a text box, in which case you can have a different paper template as the background. But it doesn't look very nice when you do that in my opinion. And I wish it would add the ability where you can change the paper template depending on what page you're on, which is something that GoodNotes 5 does let you do. Then you can go ahead and just delete a text box pretty easily and cut or copy it as well if you want to. So it's all very easy to do. Now in terms of importing documents, you can import Word, PowerPoint, and Excel files into here. It'll convert them into PDFs for you. So I do that all the time with my lecture slides in class. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So if I open up Canvas, you can see I've pulled up a PowerPoint presentation on consciousness. So if I go ahead and import that to Notability by clicking on Notability right here, then I can decide to add it to my note that I've been working on or create a new note. So we'll just add it to the note I'm working on. And then we'll click import at the top right here. And now you can see it's been sent to Notability. So now I can go ahead and open up Notability and you can see that if I scroll down, I have this whole presentation on consciousness like a PDF even though it was a PowerPoint presentation. So that's really cool. I use this a lot for all my classes. It doesn't really matter how my professor uploads the document, whether it's a Word document in Excel or a PowerPoint document, I, or doc, PowerPoint presentation, I can go ahead and up, import that into Notability really easily. 
Another thing that I don't like about Notability is that you can't have portrait and landscape pages in the same notebook. So right now I have the iPad horizontally and I had to keep it that way in order to do a screen recording. But if I turned it vertically, it would also turn vertically with you. So I can't have the paper in vertical position and the tablet in the horizontal position, they have to align. So this, if you don't understand what this means, you should probably just check out a good notes tutorial or something to see exactly what that means because it's a little bit hard to explain. You can also convert your handwriting to text. So if I want this to be text instead of just my handwritten notes, I can go ahead and click convert to text and it'll tell you what it's going to convert it to and you just click convert. And now it's created a text box with what you wrote. And I can go ahead and get rid of the numbering there because we don't want that numbering. And now it is just as text. One other thing that's really nice about Notability is that there is a desktop version for the Mac. So if you want to use it on and have your notes on your computer as well, you can do that. That's also sometimes very useful when I have certain notes that I want to look at and I want to write a different note. So I can pull up that note on my Mac and then write whatever notes I want on the iPad. It's also good for importing documents, so you don't have to use your iPad to import documents. You can just import them on Notability on your Mac. And if you turn on iCloud Sync, it'll sync between the two devices. There's also this really useful feature called Split View, where you can have two notes open up at the same time if you wanna take a look at those. So here you have one note open here and one note open here, and then you just click on the side that you wanna edit, and you can go ahead and edit that side. Now in terms of adding pictures, that is also really easy to do and there are pretty good picture features that you can add. So there are a couple ways you can add pictures. One of the easiest ways that I do it is just go up to Google and type in an image in Google Images. So we'll go ahead and click on Google Images and we'll type in Notability. So we'll go ahead and if we want to, we can just pull up Safari on the side like this. And if I really like this Notability image, I can just drag and drop it here. You can also add an image from your photo library, so I'll go ahead and do that. And you can see that this is the photo that I've just added. So there are a lot of different ways you can manipulate this photo. You can add a caption to it. So I wanna explain what this photo is. This is a squash court photo, squash court. And if you think that text is too big, you can go ahead and decrease the text. But now you have a caption on your photo. Now you can rotate the photo too, which is always really useful. So if I want it to be this way, a little silly, or I can just keep it normal. That's also really nice. You can crop the photo, which is really good to do. And that's very useful. All features should have a crop option. So let's go ahead and crop this bottom part out. So that's good. You can enable text wrapping or disable text wrapping, which you can also do for text boxes, by the way. So if you don't want it to wrap around the text, you can disable that. And you can copy and cut, paste, you can do a whole bunch of different things. So the reason why I really like the rotating feature is because sometimes you might have images that your professor has given you that are this way and you need them to be this way. So you can go ahead and just rotate it yourself and it's not a big deal. You can also resize the picture as you want. But the only problem I have with this is that you can only resize it proportionally. So I can't make this like wide, abnormally wide or abnormally tall. It'll scale proportionally to what you want. So a lot of people probably like this and most people want to enlarge their, their images proportionately. But sometimes you might want to stretch an image out a little bit um, and you can't do that with Notability. So briefly just going into some of the settings that you get with Notability. So you can't automatically back up to your cloud service of choice and I back up to OneDrive because my school gives me one terabyte free, so that's really nice. And all my notes are always backed up, which is really great. You can decide how you wanna back them up. I back them up as PDFs because that's the most versatile, And but you can also back them up with the recordings if you want. I don't back up the recordings because it's usually saved a notability and I'm not too worried about that. But you can save it as a note file, as an RTF or an RTF plus recording. You can decide whether you want it to include the paper margins and the paper that you want. So if you don't want that paper template background, you can just deselect this and it will make all your pages blank. But if you do want the paper template background, you should make sure that is selected. You can also make sure you enable iCloud syncing so that notability is synced between all your devices. You can unlock these different themes if you want. If you want to purchase some different themes for notability, you can do that too. I actually might go ahead and purchase one of these themes because I really like notability. I think it's really great. And some of these themes actually seem pretty cool. So I might actually go ahead and do that. You can change what your blank note is called. So the default note title I have is just note, and then I make sure it includes the date. You can also make sure it includes the time by default. And then here you can change your paper color and your paper template 
when you create a new note by default, but of course you can always change this later on too. You can disable the tap anywhere to start typing on that line if you just wanna use text boxes, so that's an option as well. Handwriting, you can make sure that it has shape detection and straight lines held on if you like, but if you don't, if you find that annoying, you can go ahead and turn them off here. You can also make sure that it's in left-handed mode if you're left-handed, and you can enter zoom mode while handwriting if you want, but this is a feature that I don't think is very useful at all because you can just pinch to zoom, and I think that's a lot easier to do and feels more natural as well. So once we've created our beautiful note, let's go ahead and rename this as Notability. There we go. And once you want, you can start sharing this with someone so you can very easily email it, airdrop it, or share it via other apps. If you go ahead and click on other apps, you can make all the adjustments that you want based on the format you want, whether you want the paper template to be there or not, whether you want to include recordings, and then you can go ahead and share the note. So up above here are my contacts, which I don't want to show you, but you can airdrop them to your contacts or message them to your contacts, which you can see up there. But down here, you can see that you can more easily um, airdrop it, message, email, send it via notability, copy it, print it, save to files, etc. So a lot of easy ways to share your notes with Notability. So if you have any questions on some features of Notability that maybe I forgot to mention, be sure to let me know. But overall, Notability is my favorite note-taking app and I would definitely recommend it for anyone who is just starting off. I think you get the most features and the most versatility for sure. And it feels the most natural to me when you're writing on it and the most like a notebook, but just digitally converted. So that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.